Hey guys, what's up? We have the information about the link monsters that are supporting some of the older classic archetypes. And finally, Konami has stopped teasing us and actually given proper information regarding six of them. The first is Clifford Genius. This is an Earth Machine Link 2 with the links on the bottom right and the bottom left. It has 1,800 attack and it requires two machine monsters. It, its effects are 1. This Link Summoned card is unaffected by spell and trap effects and the activated effects of other Link monsters. 2. Once per turn, you can target one other face-up card you control and one face-up card your opponent controls. Negate both of their effects until the end of this turn. 3. When two monsters are special summoned to the zones this card points to, at the same time, you can add one level 5 or higher machine monster from your deck to your hand. The first effect uh, to be protected from any spell or traps means that it can stay on the field more easily, as well as the protection from opposing link monsters, uh, providing additional protection. The second effect, being able to negate a card from your field and your opponent is good. The other Klee monsters can be normal summoned, but their attacks go to 1800. But by negating the effect, they instantly become 2800 attack beaters and you can shut down some of your opponent's more problematic effects. The third effect enables you to search without any costs attached. Remember that the Klees are pendulum monsters, so to bring two of them to the field at the same time, provided you have the scales, is easy to manage, and enables you to search for either more Klees, or the boss monsters Apocryphort, Skybase, or Towers. The machine requirement is necessary, as other decks would splash this card in, but with its effects overall not being set specific to the Klees, means that other machine type monsters can benefit from this card, as you have more extra monster zones opened up, and you can still run generic pendulums to enable this effect to search for something like a blowback dragon. The one downside of this card is the attack stat is 1800, your opponent can easily get over this with special summon monsters or by stat increasing cards or alternatively other extra deck monsters such as Castell to bounce it back to the extra deck. The next card is Gladiator Beast Dragasius. This is a wind winged beast link to with link points at the bottom left and bottom right and it has 2,000 attack. It requires two gladiator beast monsters, and its effects are, you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. Its first effect is, if a gladiator beast monster you control attacks, it cannot be destroyed by that battle, and your opponent cannot activate cards and effects until the end of the damage step. Two, at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, you can return this card to the extra deck, special summon two gladiator beast monsters with different names from your main deck. The first effect helps to ensure that your gladiator beasts are able to change out without being prevented to by your opponent. For example, before this card was uh, came into existence, the gladiator beast archetype was very weak, especially to battle traps, such as mirror force or dimensional prison, as often they couldn't do anything and as, as a result of not making a successful attack, even if it was something like a negate attack, they would be left on the field. Uh, with their stats ranging anywhere between Gladiator Beast Secutor with 400 attack to Octavius, who had a level 7 with 2500 attack. These are just based obviously off the standard monsters and not their fusion cards. They have had a bit of support previously, but nothing that would bring them too much into the future. They have a few fusions which are quite powerful, but they all rely on having specific monsters on the field, which is why they rely so heavily on their tag out effect. With the battle and card protection, whilst they are attacking it means they cannot do anything to stop you from going into what you want. As for the second effect, the fusion monsters do pretty much the same thing, 
they enable you to return it to the extra deck to bring out two gladiator beasts. This can enable you on your main phase two to either keep the monsters or bring out something like a gladiator beast Geyserus, who can destroy two cards on the field. This is the perfect link monster for them as it fixes their all their basic problems related to when they attack and provides options for them to bring out multiple fusions rather than be consigned to the one with the link format rules. The requirements for this card are much more specific than the first and the reason is so that it only works to benefit gladiator beasts. If it was more generic than this, people would use this card and they would still ignore the archetype. The next card is Cherubini, Black Angel of the Burning Abyss. This is a dark fairy link monster with link two, whose link points are bottom left and bottom right, and it has 500 attack. It requires two level three monsters, and its effects are, you can only use the third effect of this card's name once per turn. Its first effect is monsters this card points to cannot be destroyed by card effects. Second effect is, if this card on the field would be destroyed by battle or by your opponent's effects, you can send one card you control to the graveyard instead. Three, you can send one level three monster from your deck to, to the graveyard, then target one burning abyss monster you control. Increase that target's attack and defense by the attack and defense of the sent monster until the end of the turn. The first effect enables your monsters to be given a card destruction prote protection, which can at times be necessary when facing back row heavy decks, though less people work with destruction and more removal effects nowadays. The second effect to substitute this card uh, from being destroyed to another card works with the Burning Abyss cards as they get effects based off their own destruction and enables you to access your zones open for extra deck monsters. The final effect enables you to send a Burning Abyss to the graveyard to boost a specific stat by the amount desired for the turn. This provides some form of protection and can boost them to a point to use in battle. I don't consider this card to be as effective as the other two, as this, this does not uh, so much fix their issues, but then again, this is the newest out of the three archetypes mentioned so far, and by logic, they would need the least to su uh, support to bring them into the new era. The next card is Krios, Dominion of the Light Swarm. This is a Light Warrior Link Monster, Link 3, with Link points pointing up, bottom left, and bottom right, and it has an attack stat of 2400. It requires three monsters with the same attribute, but different types. Its effects are, you can only use this card's names first and second effects once per turn each, so this is a hard once per turn. First effect is, if this card is Link Summoned, you can send one card from your deck to the graveyard. Second effect is, if a card is sent from your deck to the graveyard by a card effect, send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. Third effect is if this face-up card leaves the field due to your opponent's card effect or destroyed by battle, you can target one card in your graveyard, add it to your hand. The first effect enables you to send a specific card you want to the graveyard. This can be used to send Light Swan Judgment to the graveyard to search for a ju Judgment Dragon or can set up for other Light Swarm effects. The second effect enables a second mill, which will generate card advantage, obviously depending on the cards sent. For example, Felis and Wolf bring themselves back. The third effect is probably the best effect. One of the biggest downsides to the Light Swarms are th that they can mill some of their best cards. By this effect, you can recover something important, such as a ju Judgment Dragon. And overall, this card is wanted within the deck, as this adds to their consistency, to either search out or recover their boss monster, as well as helping to trigger additional effects. The reason why this is a Link 3 is so that it becomes slightly more difficult to summon, and provides an extra monster zone for your opponent, so as this card is not too much of an impact. Out of the current four, it's summoning is not too bad as Light Swarms can summon those monsters quickly and prevents it from becoming broken 
as you will have to account for offering your opponent an additional extra monster zone. The fifth card is Crystron Needle Fiber. This is a water machine link monster, link two with the points on the bottom left and bottom right. It has 1,500 attack and requires two monsters, of which at least one must be a tuner, and its effects are you can only use each effect of this card's name once per turn. Its first effect is if this card is link summoned, you can special summon one level three or lower tuner monster from your hand or deck in face up defense position. Also, it cannot activate its effects on this turn. Second effect is during your opponent's main phase or battle phase as a quick effect. You can banish this card, special summon one tuner synchro monster from your extra deck. This special summon is treated as a synchro summon. The first effect enables the summoning of a tuner monster. This could work for any synchro deck, as provided you have a non-tuner on the field, will encourage a synchro summon. The second effect to bring out a tuner synchro monster is a very important effect. Normally tuner synchros are difficult to bring out. Owing to typically having lower levels, focusing on you to run smaller monsters, you may not want to. With it, with, but with this in your extra deck, you may no, no longer have to run quite as many as you used to. This can build for better synchros, as some of the higher ones uh, cannot be brought out unless a synchro tuner is present. Overall, this card does not fix issues with crystrons. But those generally with synchro monsters, the requirements are not difficult to achieve as all synchro decks will run multiple tuners. The final card is Heretic Seal of the Celestial Spheres. This is a link dragon, this is a light dragon link monster with link two and the links are pointing bottom left and bottom right and it has zero attack. It requires two dragon monsters and its effect is you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. First effect is once per turn during your opponent's turn. If this card is in the extra monster zone as a quick effect, you contribute one monster you control or in your hand, return one face up card on the field to the hand. Its second effect is if this card is tributed, special summon one dragon monster from your hand or deck and make its attack and defense zero. The first effect is able to reset some of your heretic effects as they work by being tribute summoned or can deal with an opponent's card as since it is a quick effect can respond on either player's turn. The second effect is similar to other heretics who can also summon dragons and force their stats to zero. This helps to search for your dragons as well as set up for the following turn. This card is not necessary but does still help to support the Heretics. Overall, the requirements make sense as it is a dragon type deck and could be used to support other dragon type cards. So guys, what do you think of these Link Monsters? Which is your favorite and which don't you like? Which can you see also being within the meta and which would you rather avoid? Leave your comments down below, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and as always, thank you for taking the time to watch this video.